What do you suppose we're hitting? Hello and welcome to Geek Domo. Okay, today we're going to be doing our mailbag episode for EverQuest Next. I asked a question, send in anything you want to talk about on the mailbag show and I'll cover it. So here we are. And I have quite a few replies back here from a lot of different people. Uh, I got some from Twitter, most of them from email, and a couple from people asking some questions through Reddit. All right, so none of this is pre-scripted. I literally just printed all of these out just a few minutes ago. I haven't even looked at them. So the replies are gonna be off the cuff and they might, and by all means, 100% guaranteed to have some inaccuracies in them. That is my disclaimer, so let's get on with the questions. All right, so cool guy. Oh, if I butcher your name, I apologize, but cool guy, pretty easy to do. All right, cool guy says, hey Domo, so we have a hot bar for our weapon abilities and a hot bar for our class abilities. What about activated items like Zephyr boots showed in the at SOE live? Do you think they'll add a separate hot bar for items? That's a great question. Uh, I believe at some point they're going to probably come up with some sort of UI showing exactly how it's done. Right now, all the videos, as you've seen, they don't show any UI at all. And that might be good or bad. I don't know. But I'm hoping they'll allow for some UI customization where you'll be able to take items that actually have special abilities and put them either on the bar or maybe above the bar or maybe move some buttons around. I really hope they allow for customization of the UI because Guild Wars 2 does not at all and that causes a bunch of problems there too. So I'm hoping they'll allow you to at least move some things around. All right, next question. All right, this is from Duzari. Hey, I wrote an article on how player cities and guild hall banks could be used as awesome player created raid targets. And it's got a link here for something on EQN forums. Okay, I get the idea of what you're saying here though. Um, so basically you're saying that somebody could come into a town and take out somebody else's house, or you could have a raid target to where you're gonna take out an opposing guild, guild hall. That's cool. Uh, I don't know how they would be able to pull that off, but it, the premise of it is really cool. We'll see how that goes. We won't be able to find out that kind of stuff till more later on, but it's a neat idea. I like it. All right, this one's from Pancake. I like Pancake. He leaves a lot of comments on my videos. All right, I find myself disappointed with the current lack of some weapon types in MMOs, spears. So my question to you is this. Do you have the same opinion as me, and what are your favorite weapons in games? Also, which weapons would you like to see in EQN? All right, so this actually has to do a little bit with the current roundtable question where they're asking, should we have guns and ninjas? Where they come up with these these questions on the round table are just crazy. They, whoever's designing the polls is doing a really bad job because the questions are really vague and they don't have definitive answers. And so you never really say yes or no, you want something. It's just maybe, which isn't, what's, what's the point of having a poll if the answer is going to be maybe. All right, so am I disappointed with the current lack of some weapon types? Okay, so in history, we had certain types of weapons, you know, swords, daggers, halberds, uh, spears, and they were used to, for different reasons. Like you would never, ever go into close quarter combat melee with a spear. I mean, if you did, it was just because you had to and you had no other weapon on at the time. But going in close with somebody with a spear doesn't work well. And so what they've done in MMOs is sort of made every weapon sort of doing the same ability. Like you can hit with a spear two inches away. In real life, trying to get that spear, which is sticking out the back of you now, to have any kind of real power behind it, I don't know. So MMOs have sort of said, ah, it's okay. You can use a spear right up next to somebody. You can shoot an arrow right there on somebody. Where there's a whole bunch of physics involved that I'm not gonna get into in this part, but Basically, uh, the, every weapon being in the game, sure, I could see that. Guns, not so much. I'm not much of the fantasy. I think we should sort of keep with fantasy. And then if you want to play a, a Shadowrun game or some sort of steampunk game, then go do that somewhere else. But I'm kind of one of the purists that says that if it was in history as a weapon, yes, let's have it. But up to a certain point. Anything from the modern industrial era doesn't belong in. So what type of weapons would I like to see in EQN? Uh, I want a claymore. <laughs> also another real close quarters combat weapon. Not the greatest of close quarters combat weapon, but does a lot of damage and cleaves people in twain. I do want to say one thing though, real quick on this. I don't want to see eight foot long, this thick 
sores being carried around by everybody. I'm not a Final Fantasy fan of that of the weapons in that respect. Like Cloud was carrying around this sword that was as big as a car. I mean, really, it looks impressive, but re the reality of it is just the can't stand it. Alexander Hadi Pesic. I'm sorry, really bad with names, as you know. All right. Basically goes in saying he likes my videos. Let me get to the question. Okay, what do you think the easiest, cheapest class ability to use that will be totally over the top? Like having a teleport backstab on a melee crit type character who can also blind or confuse. Or maybe a caster that can nuke from really, really far away and keep teleporting away from whatever damage that while supporting a mana shield. So personally, he thinks it's gonna be the teleporting critting disability type, and what do I think? All right, I'm all for the really crazy class combos, and I'm sure somebody's gonna develop them. And there's a really great video out there that if you watch the video I did a couple days ago showing the Uncanny Valley, the same person who did that one, right off the top of my head, can't remember his name, but if you go look at his videos, you'll see he has one where he talks about the balance aspect of an MMO. And so it's going to be tough to figure out the exact perfect maneuver. And even if it is so awesome right now, what will end up happening is through time, uh, people will figure out a good counter to it. And then everybody will be playing the other character that has the really awesome counter. And then once everyone's starting to play that, somebody will find some other new thing, which will change the balance again. So which type of really crazy maneuvers will they have? Who knows? We won't know until we get in. Remember, 40 different classes, at least. They said they say up to or at least 40, meaning that there's probably more than 40, it could be 50. And all of those classes, all the different weapons, all the different types of builds you could have, it's really gonna be crazy. So we won't know until we get close, but I'm excited to see what is a really good one later on. The next one is from Christopher L. Muma. I know not a lot is out there, but could you cover crafting and player housing a little bit closer? Actually, um, I did a combination video with Landmark and the technology involved behind it with the voxels. But what I think I end up doing is just doing a straight up Landmark video. So I'm not going to answer this directly right now. I was thinking on Monday I'll do a video just for Landmark. So we'll cover Landmark and player housing in detail on that because I think that deserves an episode all by itself. So we'll get to that one next. All right. So the next one is from Cool Hands. I'm not gonna read all that. <laughs> Let me get to the question inside. The underlying criteria of one through four is the AI. What will earn this game a place in gaming history and the title of true next-gen MMORPG is the AI. Depending on how emergent the AI is, will determine how transformative EQN is going to be. What do I think? Absolutely. Uh, I, talked about a little bit, I talked a little bit about this in my video for the emergent AI saying that a game can be absolutely beautiful, but it doesn't have longevity if it doesn't have any depth. So you, know, you look at some beautiful model, and the model is just absolutely gorgeous, but she can't spell ABC. Person doesn't have much depth, whereas somebody who might not be as pretty actually has read books their whole life and has a lot of depth and can have cogent conversations. So, same thing with the game. Game could look beautiful on the surface, but if it doesn't have any depth to it, then, yeah, not gonna go very far. Uh, the Immersion AI idea, and through Storybricks, I think it has a lot of room to grow. And I think we could really see an amazing game come out of this, beyond the beautiful part, which is the voxels and all of the stuff they're gonna be doing with the engine. I think the Immersion AI is gonna take this thing to the next level, if they can pull it off. If they don't get it just quite right, it's gonna flop. And that's why I hope that they take Landmark for a while and let, let us play with that for a couple of years to get it all out of our system and then bring in EverQuest Next. Maybe not a couple of years, maybe about a year. A year of us playing with Landmark so that EverQuest Next can really get that stuff dialed in. It's really important and I hope they can nail it down. All right, these next comments come from Twitter. They were sent to me, direct message. All right, this, this I'm really bad with names, so I'm just gonna say fan text something. What do you think about concurrent EQ Next and EQ3 being released at the same time. Okay, so I've heard some rumblings about this where people said that EverQuest Next should be made concurrently with EverQuest 3. And I think it's from a faction of people that really want to see more of a fantasy oriented, not cartoony looking game. I think you guys are just wishing on something that's probably not gonna happen. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be the one to break it to you, but 
if they were to make two games at the same time, one to satisfy a certain faction and the other one to satisfy everybody else, it's going to split the pool of people that are going to be going to one game or another game. So, yeah, don't hold your breath. I think EQ Next is what it's going to be, and, and the other game is just going to have to wait, maybe. Or maybe some one of you guys could make one <laughs> if you're really into the game so much. All right. From Birdle Bear 98 do you have a favorite race? I really like the Dark Elves. Uh, I like the whole evil background story that they have. It's really cool, and, and the whole house faction thing. Um, probably say Dark Elf. And the, the fact that they can see at night just makes it all the best, especially when the old EverQuest where you couldn't see at all and having the ability to see at night 100% was just awesome. Even though it was kind of purple, I dug it. So I, I think that the Dark Elves are definitely my favorite race. All right, so this is from Joe Dirt 33 How long did you play the EQ games? Well, if you saw my, uh, my EQ Next Story video, I played EverQuest 1 for probably three years and quit completely. And then a friend of mine talked me into playing EverQuest 2 about two years ago, three years ago. I played it for about six months and I, I couldn't, just couldn't get into it. I wanted to, but it was just so weird and I didn't like it. And all the other games I was playing at the time were out and I was playing Dark Ages of Camelot or, I played every single MMO. So I tried playing EverQuest 2 when it came out, but I was distracted by other games that I liked a lot more. Sorry. All right, last question for this mailbag is EQ Next going to be family friendly game? Uh, I believe so. Um, I don't know what they're going to have for blood and gore if that's what you mean. Uh, Guild Wars 2 as you saw from my other video is really sexy. The women were and so that was still family friendly. I mean I let my kids play it so it's okay. Um, so yeah I think it'll be a family friendly game and, and the, the landmark part where you can build your own stuff is very Minecraft like and so my son loves Minecraft and he'll probably dig that part of the game. So yeah I can see it being pretty family friendly. Alright that about wraps it up. Thanks a bunch everybody for sending these questions. There was a couple that I just didn't cover because they were either really way too long or their question was just too vague so I left those ones out. But everybody for writing in I really appreciate it. That was really cool that you guys wrote so many different awesome questions. And I will make another one of these probably next weekend. Maybe we'll make it our Saturday show as a mailbag show from the previous week. It's not really all that hard. Maybe I say that because it gets harder. Yeah, I think it's just the stuff. That guy's gonna get back up again. Oh, look, they're like vampires.